Hey guys and welcome to the battle phase. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at another V Trooper variant, this time the Ragnar Raika V Trooper. But this is not just a basic Ragnar Raika V Trooper deck, because we are not playing the Ragnar Raika Evil Seed nor the Ragnar Raika Bloom. We are keeping the Ragnar Raika engine at a minimal, just using it to enhance our end board. So that keeps the engine slots at a minimum, allowing us to play a lot of the other stuff you would want to play in a deck. Since Bloom and Evil Seed are also secret rares, this keeps the deck's price a lot lower than we would have it otherwise. So, with that said and the premise set, it is time for us to hop into the deck profile. As you can see, starting with the main card of the deck, obviously the Resonance Insect. So we're playing the three copies of the Resonance Insects, the only starter you're actually going to need in the deck. Opening this alongside one extender, so this plus an extender is going to be full combo. But you need to open the Resonance Insect. We know the effect if it's sent to the graveyard, it searches a level 5 or higher insect. If it's banished, it then foolish burials an insect. Just so much playmaking in one single card, and this is the main card you want to see in every single hand. Since that's only three copies of the Resonant Insect, we obviously want to keep the consistency higher, so that's why we play the three copies of Retaliating C as well. Retaliating C's effect is if it's sent to the graveyard, it can search a Earth Insect, which is Resonance Insect. This is a little bit trickier to combo with this card, so using it is going to require us to have two extenders, not just one insect extender alongside it. Which makes it a little bit trickier to use in the combo, so we do prefer to see our Resonance Insect than the Retaliating C. However, since there is so many little ways to access the Resonance Insect, we have to play this card as well. But even like this, this is only six starters in the deck, not ideal. So that's why we also have to play some spells to make up for it. One of such is going to be Small World. We do play the three copies of Small World. The card is a minus one. However, because of the web of Small World bridges this deck has, and it really has a lot as you can see, Small World is very useful because it not only gets almost every card in the deck gets you to your Resonance Insect in order to perform the full combo, it can also search you the extender that you might be lacking to perform full combo. So it's very flexible, either adding the starter you need or the extender you need. Very flexible card, so it's worth the minus. And the other card we play is the three copies of Pot of Prosperity. Since this card got reprinted, there is no reason for us not to play it. Again, a very flexible card that can either search as the extenders or search as the starters in the deck. And this, alongside our six starters, kind of fills the void of consistency, allowing us now to have effectively 12 out of 40 cards in our deck, cards that are starters or search starters, which gives us an 85% chance of opening a card that is a starter or search as a starter in our opening hand. So that is really good, even though you might open sometimes the Resonance Insect and you might not have to extenders to make it full combo, you can also small world it into Resonance Insect going through one of the extenders as a bridge. So that is also a cool thing about this as well. Moving on, we're going to take a look at our extenders, because as I said, for full combo you need one as well. So for the extenders we play the three copies of Pin the Bullseye, the best ex insect extender. If you control insect, you can special summon him from the hand. The good thing about him is if you open him, you can with small world convert him into resonance insect through B Trooper Scale Bomber, which is, as you might think, the next extender that we use in this deck. So if you're normal or special in insect, you can special the uh, Scale Bomber from, uh, from your hand as well. And this guy also bridges to Resonance Insect through Small World if you needed to, using Pin. So that's already six extenders, however we play two more, and that is the two copies of Dragon Bite. We run him because he also, you guessed it, bridges into Resonance Insect, this time through Pin or Scale Bomber. So all of these extenders not only are great extenders by themselves, right? All of them also with Small World can bridge to your starters. That's why we chose them here. And that makes the number of extenders in the deck 8. So that is 8 extenders, and don't forget, Pot of Prosperity and Small World can search you these extenders if you didn't open them in your hand. So that effectively gives you 14 ways 
out of 40 cards to get your extender, which is 90% chance to open one or 58% chance to open two, which is pretty high. If we do not count the Pot of Prosperity or Small World into that, that is still eight extenders, which means 70% chance to open one. So now that we took a look at our extenders and our starters, it is time to take a look at the engine requirements. The first one being the Crawler Sama and the both crawlers that it special summons. This is such a good card to extend your plays during the combo. That's why we need it. Sama is Surge of Resonance. Since it's not a starter, we are only playing one, right? It's because it's an extender needed in the combo. So this is basically the engine that we have to play. Sama is searched by Resonance Insect alongside Beargram, who is also searched, and Doomdozer, who is also searched. So these are for our high level insect monsters that we play for Resonance Insect search targets. And then for the B Troopers, we also play the one copy of Sting Lancer and then the obvious two copies of Scout Buggy. These are our B Troopers and we access all of these through the combo as well, but we have to play these. And then the sent targets of Resonant Insects are the Gokipo, which is a search, and the Praying Mantis. Praying Mantis, you can banish it to special summon a Mantis token that is an insect and allow us to further extend our plays. Okay, moving on for our spells and traps, not really much. We do play the one copy of B Trooper Landing, which is searched, the one copy of B Trooper Formation, which is also searched. These cards, you know, are necessary for the combo. And then the one copy of the Ragnarika Trap. As you have found, the Trap is basically the only Ragnarika card in the main deck, which helps us play more hand traps and stuff. But also, it is the only card we really need because we're going to be ending on this in our end board that adds uh, the ability to pop cards on your opponent's side as a part of the end board. Now we come to the hand trap portion of the deck. For the hand traps, we play the three copies of Effect Veiler. So three Effect Veilers, very versatile card. Three Ghost Mourners, okay? And, uh, I mean, two Ghost Mourners, and then the two Ghost Ogres. This is our hand trap lineup. Pretty peculiar hand trap lineup, if we so ask ourselves. Why? It has a lot to do with Small World, as you might expect, because all of these hand traps can either bridge to extenders or to starters in this deck. So if we first take a look at Ogre, Ogre bridges into a starter, Razo Insect, through Scale Bomber, or it bridges to an extender through Scale Bomber as well to pin. The second is the Ghost Mourner, which can bridge to the starter through pin or Scale Bomber and bridge to an extender through Effect Veiler. And the last one is Effect Veiler, which bridges to a starter through Pin the Bullseye and bridges to an extender through Ghost Mourner. So that is basically the idea behind this. We're not playing Ash because the card doesn't have a viable small world bridge to Resonance Insect. We're also not playing the Infinite Impermanence because that card is not a monster and as such we can't use it with Small World to dig for our pieces. So that is basically the lineup that we have chose. You know, three Veilers because it's not once per turn and then two of the others. And statistically speaking, that's seven hand traps. So 64% chance to open one going first and 71% chance to open one going second. That is the main deck. Now let's hop on to the extra deck. Looking at the extra deck, we do play two Ragnarika extra deck cards. First of them is the Mantis Monk and the second one is the big boss monster, the Stag Sovereign. So this is the only two Ragnarika cards we are playing. So in the whole deck, even though I've titled it Ragnarika Beach Trooper, we are only playing three Ragnarika cards, one in the main and two in the extra. However, these two cards are going to be parts of your end board. So this is a pop two and this is going to be a pop a pop one. So basically these two cards allow to add to our end board three pops and then we need the Mantis Monk as a way in order to act, extend our plays. This guy banishes, so basically it banishes to search the trap while that banish also triggers the Resonance Insect in the graveyard that gets banished. So it has very good synergy with Resonance Insect and also searches as the trap which is our interruption. And then Stack Sovereign is just a really good piece of the end board that allows us to give us that pop too. So even though the package is not big, it has a very big impact on our end board, finishing on both of these two cards at the end.
So that is the Ragnarika part. Now moving on to the more basic B Trooper, B Trooper, B Trooper extra deck. That is the two copies of B Trooper Armor Horn. As we know, the big playmaker, right? We always go into this. You can banish the second copy with Pot of Prosperity, but you need one for the combo. And then the two copy of Pico Felinia. Pico Felinia will also play two. We actually access both of them during the combo. Uh, one is needed, the other one actually comes up just in order to give you use the second effect, so to get you to net you the draw from the deck, but it's not mandatory. So in a pickle where you need to banish si when you need to banish six with prosperity, you can buy banish another one of the Pico Felinia. But this is basically the main, you know, link setup for the link twos, as we always use. And then the next B Trooper is the Invincible Atlas. The Invincible Atlas is as always used in order to pop the face down card from Crawler Sama's effect in order to summon the B Trooper from deck. So it is needed in the combo as well and obviously the part of the main link lineup here. Moving on, we do play two fusions as always. So the Cruel Saturnus and the Ultimate Great Insect. These two are, as I said, combo combo makers. The interesting part as well is that the uh, ultimate great insect is a level 9 and guess what another card in the deck is level 9 let me just find it and that is Beargram. So both of these cards are level 9 that means that we can overlay them for Hy for Hyperiton which is a part of our extra deck extra deck as well. So summoning him is going to give you that monster negate because don't forget Rag uh, Ragnarika cards that we end on the end board are only going to give us pops, right? So Hyperiton is then also going to give us monster negates, but not only monster negates, right? Because we are going to wait to activate formation that's going to be in the field spell zone until the end, we're also going to we're going to have Hyperiton on the board, we're going to activate formation, trigger Hyperiton's effect, attach the B Trooper landing from our graveyard to him in order to make sure that it also has not just a monster negate, but also a possibility of a spell negate. Right, which really, really is important for our end board since it does, since it's not gonna have any spell negates otherwise. Okay, so that is the Hyperiton. The other XC we play is obviously going to be the number three Cicada King that adds that that adds that monster negate to the end board as well. Moving into links, we do play the one copy of Appaloosa. This is also part of the end board. It's just such a good card not to play. Just dump all the stuff that's left on the board into an Appaloosa. And we also make it pretty early in the combo as well. And then the rest of these are flex spots. So we have three flex spots left. You can play whatever you want here. Uh, none of this is mandatory. I really like to play, obviously, the IP Mascarena and then the SP Little Knight or Nightmare Unicorn. In this case, Nightmare Unicorn, but you can also play the SP Little Knight if you have it. This is, in my opinion, just you know, the basically just a package if anything goes wrong, you can still draw draw something out. And another card if anything goes wrong is the Papillon. You know, just helps you shape those odd boards into something you can work with. But these three cards are always going to be your prosperity banishes, which means that, you know, it's not that important what you choose. But as always, the most flex spots in the deck are these. So Ragnarika as I said, gives very, very good variety to the end board, which I, I am a big fan of, without taking up much space. Because in previous versions, as you saw uh, on the channel, the Fusion B Trooper and the Naturia B Trooper, we always used some kind of other engines, like the Naturia engine, which was a lot of cards in order to achieve a better end board. Here, with only one in the deck, we actually have a lot more freedom to play other stuff. So you can always decide to cut some starters, cut some extenders to add more hand traps or vice versa in order to shape the deck to your liking. But this was the deck. Don't forget to check the combo tutorial to see how we established the new Ragnarikas into this B Trooper combo. And till then, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.